Come on in, y'all. Sit down. Sit down. We're taking a look at this quick Tony Pollard film session today. It's more like a film conversation with y'all. Uh, thank you for tuning in. So there's a faction of Cowboy fans that think we're going to go 3-13 and 13 if we don't have Ezekiel Elliott on the field. Now, let me just quick disclaimer. I am a fan of Zeke. Zeke is fantastic. He's the best running back in the league. I would love him to be on the team, get your deal done, whatever you need to do. Um, I like Tony, but the only thing better than Tony is Zeke and Tony. You know what I mean? But I do want to present the idea that we can live in a world without Zeke. I think Tony had a, had a pretty good day rushing here, uh, partly because I just think if Tony's going to be our running back and the rest of the team is on point, we're fine. What makes Zeke special is that Joe Looney can miss a block or Connor Williams can get blown up or Xavier Suofilo can be trash and Zeke can turn a negative one yard into three. Okay. Now, is Tony going to be able to do that sometimes? Sure. As frequent as Zeke? No. But if you just look at the handful of stud blocks that was that was pulled off on this uh on this uh play here look at connor williams your left guard here getting the second level like a gangster Psh, nasty look at tyron smith mind you tyron smith is the left tackle reaching this one tech right here that is a ridiculous stud level block if we get high level blocks then we can get solid running from tony pollard i try to tell people tony's not a gadget back he's a regular ass back he just happens to be able to do some gadget stuff and i think if we didn't have just this little bit of penetration front side that we would have been okay but tony has the vision to kind of see that penetration front side and then kind of ah, bring it back a little bit right so we have a running back uh that's not zeke that has some vision that we know tony uh has has burners he can catch the ball and we and we got a little bit of power on the back end too from young tony pollard he's not going to be as great as zeke but if he's a piece of of what we can call a serviceable running back committee, then we'll be fine. Let's keep watching. So something else that you notice is that Tony got all the carries, like the big boy carries. He didn't get these Lance Dunbar type carries where there's sweeps and tosses to the outside. No real like finesse stuff. Like he got the big boy in between the tackle carries. And when he was with the first team, he didn't rotate. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, you know, after this first drive, we didn't see Tony anymore. He didn't rotate with Weber and Chun and Jackson. Like, once he once the first team was done, he was done too. And I think that says a lot about what this team has in store for Tony. Plus, the offense is like pretty vanilla now. Like we didn't see anybody going in motion or anything like that. Tony didn't, you know, line up at receiver and run routes and catch passes. So I think we're gonna save that for the regular season. But I think there are big things in in store for Tony, whether Zeke comes back or not. Even though this isn't a run play, I just want to acknowledge that Jamez Olawale makes me sick. Same program here, third and two. Give it to him again. Let's see what happens. I think he's more going to be a, a feature back in a zeke world. And I think even if Zeke is playing with us, uh, he'll still get, like, uh, some rotational carries. He'll be on the field with, with Zeke at the same time. He'll line up at receiver. So I think we got some big things in store for Tony Pollard, man. Tony, just, Tony running kind of fearless, man. Tony running over these guys. He ain't just sliding and getting down. And I kind of want to see Tony some more of these preseason games, too, even though I want to keep him under wraps and just kind of see what happens versus the Giants or whatnot. But uh, I, I'm ready. And after all that good running, this nice drive has got to come to a halt with no points because Xavier Suofilo is getting beat up front by Sheldon Day. I hate it. Anyway, that'll normally be Zach Martin. So, hey, in my right mind, I think we would score in that in that scenario. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Hey, this is a quick film session. I wanted to just get it out because I had these thoughts on Tony, and I really wanted to get my thoughts out. Uh, I'll probably drop another film session like Tuesday, Wednesday, or something like that just to kind of, you know, keep the process going, just to get y'all in the mood for regular season football. It's preseason, but regular season football and how my film session is going to work. All right, y'all know what to do. Like buttons patreon merch all that good stuff affordable sticks.com appreciate y'all my cable bill was way too high i reached out to affordable sticks.com they sent me a fire stick plug that thing into the hdmi now i get unlimited shows movies and live tv i'm a huge sports fan so i love league pass sunday ticket and i get the pay-per-view fights for free that's something for the whole family you can buy a fire stick for every tv in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable that's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man.
The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.